Welcome to Foundational Leadership. This first part is about what is leadership. So I just wanted to introduce you a little bit to uh, my experience over the last 30, 40 years in business and in leadership positions of what really is leadership. First of all, the definition of leadership. It actually says that it's the action of leading a group of people or an organization. So you actually need to have an action of leading. You can't just have a position, uh, just a title on your business card, um, or even sometimes just people following you. The true part of leadership is that you're into action and you're leading with that action and you're doing things for people to follow or to be inspired to follow you. And you're leading a group or a group of people or an organization. Where the definition of management is the process of dealing with people or dealing with organizations or controlling things that people are doing. So there is a strong difference between leadership and management. Though a lot of people are in management positions and think they're leaders and they can be with their skills. But if you're wanting to be a better leader, you need to start looking at some of the things I'm about to talk about that make the differential between management and leadership. Uh, both are vitally important though, just so that you know that. I'm not saying you shouldn't manage people or manage tasks or manage projects. It's still quite an important thing, but this is about foundational leadership, talking about you as a leader and moving into the skills that you can apply on a practical basis where you can start to become a leader, where you start leading your organization, you start leading your people and you start leading even the job and the department that you have towards greater things and greater success. Um, just to kind of a little bit of a, uh, uh, differential between managers and leaders. Uh, managers will drive people and drive tasks where leaders tend to coach and stand beside. They're wanting to empower and they're wanting to help you along the way. Uh, managers sometimes will come from authority where leaders will try and learn respect or earn respect with their people. Sometimes managers will operate out of a fear where a leader will try to inspire and to motivate. Um, sometimes managers will use the language of I, where a leader would use the language of we, and we're doing this as a team, even though they're the leader, but as the team. A uh, manager will give tasks and say, go and do that, where a leader sometimes will say, how can I help you? How can I coach you? Let's go and do that. Um, another thing is that uh, managers can tend to react to the circumstances or to the um, situations at hand, where a leader will tend to respond, and I'm going to talk about that in another section in this course. Another thing that uh, leaders will tend to do is they will initiate things where managers will tend to wait till things happen and then look at the circumstances and then solve them. Again, some of these are, are opposites, yet they're not always wrong because you do have to have both in some positions of what you're doing in your job. However, for ultimate success as a leader, you need to start learning as a leader to respond and not to react to the situations. Sometimes managers will wait, or sometimes leaders, and you probably understand that a little bit. That's your character. They want to take action. They want to go and do stuff. They're a bit visionary and want to go after stuff. But managers will tend to just see what's in front of them rather than what's way ahead of them. I mean, sometimes there's a, an analogy that I heard once that a leader is someone who, if they were in the jungle, they'd have the machetes and they're, they're, they're just kind of like powering through all of the growth to get to the vision that's on the other side, whatever that might be, where a manager tends to be just stuck into hacking everything and trying to clear the way so that other people can then follow, and that's fine, but they tend to be stuck into the into the thing that's in front of them where leaders will power through that because they know what's on the other side because they're visionary. Um, sometimes managers as well um, will plan day to day, where, as I said before, a leader will be visionary and they'll tend to plan in the future. So if that's something that you're wanting to be as a leader, it's very foundational that you plan ahead and you start to look visionary. And as I said, some of the techniques I'm going to be teaching will be able to help you to do that. But now I just wanted to share with you just quickly in this section of um, what is leadership is four different levels of leadership that I've witnessed over the years and all necessary, but some are on the bottom scale and some are on the higher scale of achieving success. The first purpose is to inform. Well, here's the four, to inform, to persuade, to inspire, and then to motivate. But the first one is to inform. It's necessary, but here are my definitions of this. To the purpose of leadership, if you are informing people or your organization, you're transferring knowledge, you're presenting facts, you're communicating the details, and you're explaining and defining what you want or your goals that you want. So in other words, you're clarifying. So that's informing. But then the next level up, and see some people often think they're leaders, but they're just managers at that point, but they don't go to the next level. If you go to the next level, you need to start to learn how to persuade. 
You need to learn the skills of communication and negotiation. You need to learn the skills of how to team and build rapport and to be able to um, um, persuade people towards what you're leading them to. There's no use in leading and being visionary, but no one's following you and no one's going to do it. So my definition of persuading as the next second level of purpose of leadership is to then start to alter attitudes. How do you do that? How do you convince? How do you ask for commitment from your team and your people to go to where you want to go? How do you start to learn how to change values and beliefs? So remember, these are the purposes of leadership. First one is to inform, presenting the facts, clarifying, defining. The second one is persuading, starting to bring the end time goal, the bringing what's at the end of this goal that you want, starting to bring the timing of that goal, starting to bring things that excite people. You need to persuade them. Why, why would they want to follow you towards this thing? So you're starting to link in a little bit of a desire, a little bit of futuristic planning and goals for them. In one way, almost selling the features and the benefits. You're starting to persuade them to take action. Remember, that was our definition in the beginning, to lead to, and take action in that leading. Now, the third level above that, so we have inform, persuade, and the next level above that is to inspire. And that's where you need to inspire people and you need to learn the skills to be able to do that. It's very foundational. Here's my definition of how to inspire your team as a leader. It's to excite and enthuse and even encourage your staff to make that commitment. And so you've already informed them of the details of what they need to do. You've now persuaded them of why we're doing it, what's the rewards of why we're doing it, and the benefits of that. Now you need to start to inspire them as individuals and as a team. Different people have different uh, inspirational triggers depending on what that is. Some it's recognition, some it's uh, uh, you're working alongside them, some it's just achieving the goal. The different things inspire different people and so that's one of the foundational things for you to learn. The simple way is just by asking your people what, do, what are they inspired by, what gives them inspiration. So you're learning your tools of how to excite them. Almost like as a visionary and some of the things that I do to excite my team is like, okay, when we do this and when we achieve this, how is it going to look for you in your career? How do you feel about that? What skills have you attributed to that? What skills have you grown with? So you're starting to excite them. You're starting to inspire them towards where you're going, but it gives them a little bit of a, uh, inspiration towards why they're going to do it. It gets the excitement going. Now I've seen some leaders get to that point of that third purpose of leadership and everything's still quite successful. However, the, the rare few, and that's probably why you're watching this video and taking the time to do that, you're wanting to have that extra competitive edge of leadership. One thing that I've noticed from myself and others that I've taught how to be excellent leaders and to achieve that success is this next step, and that is to motivate. The, the purpose of leading number four on the top is to motivate people into action. You might think inspiration and motivation is the same, but it's not. There was a time in, uh, in my early part of my career when I was uh, in the 80s and I used to, through America, would do speaker keynotes, large groups of thousands of people. And I used to be a motivator, so I could motivate and motivate people. The thing is I'd inspire them, I'd give them great techniques, but by the end of the course or the day later, they'd be calling me going, I'm not inspired anymore. So I realized it's one thing to motivate people in the sense, sorry, it's one thing to inspire people but how do you actually motivate in the sense of self-motivate them into action? It's easy to inspire people as a leader and it's a great trait if you have that. But how do you take it to the next level? How do you take it to that competitive edge of leadership where you actually can motivate someone, not by just inspiring, but creating a self-motivation within them to be able to break through all the things that are difficult and reach the opportunities they want. And then you as a leader achieve that as well. So the definition I have is that you actually need them to be able to take action on these things through self-motivation. One of the greatest ways that I've found as a leader to be able to find that out is simply sitting down with my team and asking them what motivates them. What are their desires? What's the desire that will get them through the difficulty times? What are the desires that will get them through the day-to-day -day problems that show up in their business? What is the desire or long-term goal that they want as a lifestyle that's going to get them through that point? And let me just give you one more example before I finish this section. When I first uh, learned how to drive a car, I learned on a manual car or a shift car or a standard car, depending on what country you're in, but where there's gears. I remember when I first saw my father driving, he used to have his hand, arm out the window, driving the wheel with one hand, and I thought, how easy is this going to be to learn how to drive? So I get in the car for the very first time, 
And I put my arm out the window, wind the window down, put it out, didn't have electric windows back then. And then I started to um, you know, think of how I can drive. And there was these pedals down there. And my father said, put you know, your, your foot on the left, on the clutch, and put on the accelerator. And then you, he told me how to do it, but I hadn't done it before. The very first thing I did is, and as soon as I started, I bunny hopped or kangaroo hopped or jumped the car down the driveway. I wasn't used to how to move this clutch and this accelerator. So it took me some time to learn how to do that and how to get comfortable. But I expected that I would be great at this thing. The interesting thing is that when I started to drive in the streets, I would get embarrassed. I'd come up to lights and I'd stall the car or I'd, I'd kind of jump it when I was getting into other lanes and other areas and it was embarrassing. So it was a difficult situation. Well, what was the desire that I had in me to keep going through those difficult times, to keep learning and learning so that I could achieve the result? How could I lead myself to that? And basically at that age, 16, 17, I had two desires of why I wanted to get my license and drive a car. One was girls, I wanted to be able to have, and freedom to be able to take them out and have freedom that I didn't have to have my parents pick me up and drop me off to places. So I had a deep desire for that. And you might think, but everyone does, but they don't. You'd be surprised how many people I've met that when they're learning how to drive, they got so uncomfortable with the, the, the change that was happening, with the difficulty of it, that they quit learning how to drive and still don't even drive today, 20 or 30 years later. Some people I've heard they didn't wait, they waited at least 20 years before they'd get back into a car to learn how to drive. So that's the key I'm trying to mention here is that as a leader, you can start to learn to find out what's the desire, what's the motivational behavioral trigger in your people you're leading so that they will be able to, in difficult times or when they're not feeling right or they're not feeling like they can achieve this goal, you can lead them through by them being self-motivated according to a desire, something that will get them to achieve it. So that's primarily the four things that I want to mention in foundational leadership. There is a difference between leadership and management and that the, there are four levels. One is to inform, but that's not all there is. Then you need to persuade and convince people. Then you need to go to the next level and learn how to inspire and excite people towards you're leading them to. And the fourth is motivation, but self-motivation. 